Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of A Technician's Corner. This is Cougar. Uh, here I'm working on this latitude. As you can tell, I am uh, disconnecting the battery right here. And uh, with these batteries on this model, they have this little bar type thing on the side. As you can see, I'm taking a couple of screws out there and lifting it up out of the way, uh, as well as there is this, the other screw on the other side. And then uh, up towards the top there, uh, just above this, where this screw is, and that little assembly piece, there is uh, a little piece that kind of uh, sticks kind of underneath the system board a little bit. You got to unhook it, as you can see there. And then, of course, you got to make sure that those cables aren't uh, taped uh, or that you get those released. Uh, now, here, this is the solid state drive that would be either an NVMe or NGFF, depending on which model it is and uh, that's pretty easy to take out as you can see just a simple screw uh, popping out the ram right there pretty straightforward so far these are not real difficult to take apart uh, this here is the little clip that holds the antenna connectors onto the wi-fi card uh, now i don't tend to pull those wires off if i don't have to because they are a little bit of a pain to put back on uh, you have to go by feel if you do have to put those back on. You can kind of feel them snap into place. Now I've got a few of these flat ribbon cables, the touchpad, the keyboard. Uh, they're just taken off. We also have uh, the speakers and then this little side one here for some of the ports that are on the side as well. Uh, I just released the battery from uh, the actual chassis there and I stick it to the system board since that's what I'm replacing undo the uh, cable for the fan and let's go ahead and get this uh, heat sink off and that's just four screws uh, sometimes it does take a fair bit of pressure to uh, get those to break loose so you can see me kind of pressing down a little harder uh, and then that thermal paste also kind of holds them on there so having something to pry it off with works uh, really well now that was just the plate that holds down the lcd connection and as you can see, I do have to kind of pry that up off there because they're on there pretty tight sometimes. And this right here that I'm disconnecting and sliding out of there is the cable that goes to the AC power. Uh, now we've got to lift the uh, hinge over on this side up out of the way because it does fold over top of the board itself and helps to kind of hold it in place as well as as you can see the assembly for that LCD uh, connector. Now there are a handful of other little screws um, around the board and uh, on a couple other things there's a few on the board there that you could see. Uh, take note of where those are at of course. Uh, and make sure you keep them in a safe place. Now uh, I'm checking over, making sure I've got everything disconnected. And as you can see, the board just lifts right up and out. So very simple and easy to do. Uh, and there I'm gonna go ahead and get the, uh, the new one. As you can see there, the battery uh, has come with it. Sometimes there's some tape that goes over some of those uh, little connectors uh, where the flat cables are at and everything. So go ahead and make sure you remove all of that. Uh, it's usually just basic yellow cellophane, uh, cellophane tape. And uh, then just start kind of reversing everything that I just did. Uh, this one has a brand new battery. Now this of course is just one of the standard batteries, but they now take them and attach the little wires on so you can plug them in and out instead of doing the snap down thing that the, uh, well, that the desktop systems still pretty much do. Uh, they've kind of gotten away from that on all of these uh, laptops. Uh, it just, I guess, makes it easier for them in terms of uh, production. Now, don't forget, like I said, just remember where all these screws are at. If you need to uh, keep an eye out, take a look. Uh, I'm going to kind of go back and forth between pieces here, obviously, reinserting everything the way that it came out. So this is a real simple job if you're going to be doing this. Obviously, if all you need to do is take out the hard drive or the RAM or something like that, you saw how easy that was earlier on.
Now make sure when you seat that uh, that connection down for the LCD that it seats all the way across and it is snapped down on one side and on the other. Sometimes they don't seat all the way down and even though you put that little uh, plate on the top there it can be uh, off just a little bit and uh, you'll get some artifacting and some funky stuff kind of going on with the screen when you uh, try to display an image. Uh, same with any of these other ribbon cables. Make sure they go in. They have little tabs on either side, usually like a little round piece uh, that has to sit far enough up in there that it catches um, on the connector itself. There are two little uh, standoffs that those tabs kind of sit behind before you flip the top down to seat it and hold it in. And there we go. One definite one there is for the keyboard, of course. Uh, it happens to flip not down over the ribbon cable, but it flips from the opposite side of the connector. And then, of course, the one for the touchpad. Now, of course, you want to make sure you get these uh, wires uh, fed through and kind of underneath all the little hold down mechanisms that are there around the fan and whatnot as well as there is that little piece of tape that's holding those wires down for the antenna uh, and right there you might have noticed I was messing with the little connector I like to give it a little bit of a bend so it bends down just a little bit puts some pressure on those little cap ends uh, for the wires uh, the RAM of course very easy slide it in snap it down make sure it seats very well and snug in there same with the hard drive, make sure you slide it in nice and tight and uh, get it screwed in uh, properly. Uh, now take and obviously you can see I'm putting new thermal paste on. I just cleaned off the old thermal paste from the heat sink there and you don't want old dry stuff on there. Uh, it doesn't work very well at all. So I'm putting nice fresh on there. You can see I'm covering these over pretty well. Uh, but uh, it, it is kind of hard to see. This is a very, very thin layer that I'm putting on there. Uh, I'm not going to put a big giant bead going across here because I don't want excess uh, on there. There'll be a little bit of squeeze out, but not very much. Uh, and if you have too much, it will actually hinder uh, the heating uh, or removing of heat. So you want to make sure that you don't overdo it with the thermal paste. Put it on very sparingly so that it uh, doesn't overdo it. As you could see there, I had a little bit of squeeze out. I just kind of pulled some of it off with my, uh, my little pry tool there. Obviously, the last things we've got here are just uh, putting those clips that hold the uh, battery in and uh, go ahead and finish those up and then I can go ahead and uh, flip this over and test it out. And there we go. You can see the Dell logo and the little splash screen to go up and go ahead and set up the new system board. Uh, that's the area where you're going to be plugging in the service tag number and everything. And here we've got it booting up to Windows. 
uh, obviously you can see the chargers plugged in and uh, everything is firing up just like it should and there we go we're back to windows and a working pc I'd like to wish you all a good day and i will see you later bye